January 17, 1957, Broderick Stephen Harvey Sr. was born to Jesse Harvey, a coal miner, and Eloise Vera. He was named after the actor Broderick Crawford of the TV series Highway Patrol. That he got his name from a TV actor and ended up becoming a TV host was a happy coincidence. Growing up in coal country West Virginia is not a glamorous lifestyle. He didn't have much money in his childhood, and things didn't magically get better when he was an adult. Harvey started his career as a comedian. Early in the 1980s, he did stand-up comedy. Later, he hosted Showtime at the Apollo and the Steve Harvey Show on the WB. After appearing on the Kings of Comedy tour, he was a part of the original Kings of Comedy. His latest performance was in 2012, but it was a long way to the top for him. You see, Steve Harvey was homeless for three years in the late 1980s. He slept in his 1976 Ford when the comedy gigs he worked didn't provide hotels. He spent a lot of time showering at gas stations and swimming pool showers. Harvey found himself switching between odd jobs as a mailman, auto worker, carpet cleaner, and insurance salesman when he was working hard to reach success. His fortune started to turn when Rich and Becky Liss gave Harvey a chance on a carpet cleaning contract. It wasn't comedy that saved him initially. You can see his gratitude in this video of him reuniting with the Lisses who helped him out so long ago. He can't help but show his appreciation to them even though he's already famous. Steve Harvey's early experiences with fame through years of struggle and working odd jobs, Steve Harvey persisted until he finally started to get some traction into what would eventually become his radio and television career. His fortune turned along with the decade in 1990, when he was selected as a finalist in the second annual Johnny Walker National Comedy Search. His stand-up comedy was starting to get noticed. Three years later, he was hosting its Showtime at the Apollo, a syndicated variety show that started in 1987. The hours the show was aired weren't the best. Often it was slotted in after Saturday Night Live so only the true night owls would see it. But at least he was on TV at this point. The next year came, and in 1994, Harvey was selected to be a star on the ill-fated ABC series, Me and the Boys because of his popularity as a stand-up comedian. The show didn't go much of anywhere, but it was just one more stepping stone toward his next big gig, The Steve Harvey Show which ran from 1996 to 2002 on WB. By the early 2000s, Steve Harvey was a recognizable guy, but still not a superstar. After all, The Steve Harvey Show never really saw phenomenal ratings. It was well liked within the African American community, but mostly faded from public memory and remained as a show well liked by a handful of viewers. But he just kept working from there. He got into radio in 2000 where he was host of the Steve Harvey Morning Show for five years, which is still in syndication to this day. He starred in a handful of movies, then released a stand-up special called Steve Harvey. Don't trip. He ain't through with me yet. In 2009, he released his book Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man. It stayed on the New York Times bestseller list for over a year, spending nearly six months at number one. There were no magic moments of success just a slow build. He didn't really become famous until his mid-30s or even his 40s depending on what you consider famous. Steve Harvey revived Family Feud if you know Steve Harvey for one thing now, it's for hosting Family Feud. The show has been around since 1976 and has been hosted by six different men. Steve Harvey took over the show in 2010, and he's now been the show's longest-running presenter, and arguably the best too, in the U.S., where Family Feud got its start, the show had become boring and stale by the late 2000s. The viewership ratings were really low. Then Steve Harvey took over. Since he started hosting Family Feud, ratings increased over fivefold compared to where they were when the previous host had departed. His brashness, willingness to poke fun at contestants, in a likable way, and his quick wit breathed life into an old, dry, worn-out show. Now Family Feud is competing with Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy for syndication. Five reasons Steve Harvey won the hearts of millions clearly, Steve Harvey worked his way to where he is, became recognizable in the 1990s, and really popular in the late 2000s and 2010s. He's successfully won the heart of millions, but the critics also love him. Steve has won 14 NAACP Image Awards across a variety of categories as well as two Marconi Awards and seven Daytime Emmy Awards. It feels, in a way, like life is repaying him for the hard times he experienced earlier. But why is Steve Harvey, in particular, so beloved by the public? What makes him such a perfect fit for our TVs?
Why does he stand out among other comedians as being relatable and likable? How have I even heard of him all the way in the Philippines where I'm writing from? Here are a few reasons that come to mind. Number one, Steve Harvey is a genuinely hardworking man. Number two, Steve Harvey knows what it's like to be down on your luck, and he cares a lot about charity. Number three, he has shown the ability to gracefully recover from mistakes. Number four, because he's experienced really hard times in his life, Steve Harvey is a credible motivational speaker. Number five, he's really funny.